What's going on guys, this is Ali here and today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial on Vanishing Point in Photoshop. Uh, basically Vanishing Point is a filter that allows you to position images accurately on planes within other images. So to break that down for you, you can basically position um, images onto surfaces within a picture. Um, and so f I'm going to teach Vanishing Point to you as if you've never used Photoshop before, so we're going to go through every single point to make sure that you can redo this easily uh, and you understand it completely. Um, just a brief uh, note, um, Designers Will Get This Episode 2 hasn't come out yet, uh, purely because I've got a lot of university work and I'm really struggling to, f to finish that and get my YouTube stuff sorted. So I thought I would quickly get on and give you this tutorial because it's really helpful and it's helped me with a lot of things uh, such as um, like displaying my work on billboards and stuff when I've used it to position uh, an image of mine onto a billboard. Um, so I'll teach you how to do it all now. So um, I think version wise, um, Vanishing Point is on CS, Photoshop CS3 and it comes up to CS6. So if you've got any of those versions, you should be fine. So basically what you're going to want to do is to get an image that you want to position onto a plane. So here I have my logo and I'm going to position this onto the bottom left hand corner of the windows on this building. Um, so what I tend to do, um, just remember this is all my, this is how I do things, so this might not necessarily be the best way, but this is how I do it and this is how I'm going to teach you. So I have this logo here, so the way that I select it is I come to the, uh, the rectangle mar marquee tool, sorry, the rectangular marquee tool, and you click and drag up and then drag it across and let go and select that uh, layer or the image. Then you uh, hit Command C on a Mac, if you're on Windows you hit Control C. And that's basically now copied this image to your clipboard. Now just click on the screen to get rid of the selection. Uh, and then you're going to want to uh, press the I here and hide that layer. So now you've just got your background layer and you've got uh, that logo image copied to your clipboard. Now click your background layer, which is your um, starting image, and create a new layer by clicking this button here. And then you'll have a blank layer too. Uh, then up, come to the top and you click Filter. And then you come down to Vanishing Point. And this is where it all gets rather interesting. You'll see that your cursor has changed to more of like a target shape. And basically this um, is the tool that you use to draw out a plane. So, um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to use the bottom left hand corner of the windows. So you basically draw, you click four times, that's all you need to do. And you basically draw out the plane that you want to position your image onto. So I've clicked in the top left there and then I'm going to click down here following the outer line. And you come across to the right following the line of the windows and click about here. And then you'll notice that the lines start to uh, join together as it's just a four point placement. And then the last point is going to go up there, like so. And then you'll see that it's drawn a really nice grid for you um, and it's exactly the right perspective on the building. Then what you're going to want to do is um, you've got your image copied to your clipboard. Um, you press Command C to do that. Now you press Command V or Control V on a Windows computer, and that it will take a few seconds, but it will copy your uh, image onto the um, the background image. And then as you as you just click and drag, you'll notice that it then becomes part of the plane. And also, uh, your, what you'll tend to notice is that it's much bigger than it, it you want it to be. So um, you can either drag it off the plane to see the full image and then uh, and then you can change the size or you can just leave it in and then just move it to the size so that you can see a corner. Then what you're going to want to do is you hold command and press T or control and then press T and this will then allow you to transform the um, the image that you're placing um, so that you select so that you can select the corner then you hold shift and you can scale it down so it, it won't like distort the image but it will just make it smaller for you. And you drag it and if you if you can't see it anymore that's fine it will just go over there. And I, I want it about that size so then once you've done that you just let go. Then you just click on it and bring it back over to your plane. And then you can position, position it anywhere and as you can see it gets smaller as it gets further away because that's how things work <laughs> in life if they're further away they're smaller. And if it's closer it's obviously bigger. So I'm going to position mine about here and if you want to, if it kind of does look a little bit squished, um, uh, that is accurate. But if you want it to be a little bit, um, kind of a little bit stretched, so it looks a bit better, you can just you can change it to however you want. Um, so I might just stretch that up a little, a little bit. And once, basically, once you've done that and you're completely happy with it, you can then press Enter, and you've positioned your image onto your plane, and it's completely the right perspective. You can see that by looking at the lines of where the windows are, and compare that to the bottom line of the image canvas that we've got. So you press enter, that will take a few seconds, 
and then you'll see that it's positioned exactly how it should be on the building and that is literally vanishing point you can do that for any plane you can just go to filter vanishing point and draw out the plane and then you can put any image that you want onto that plane um, and obviously you, now that you've got that as a layer um, you can then, I don't know, for example, you could add a drop shadow by double clicking on the layer 2 down here on the right. Then you'll, you'll get all of your layer styles. And you um, you can click on drop shadow. And then you can just like add a slight drop shadow um, just by toggling the distance spread and size. So distance, you're probably going to want to have maybe like one or two. Have it on two. Spread, like... Just keep the, I'd keep these numbers very low, nine, and then size, probably like maybe a four or five, no, a little bit more, about ten, and and basically it's, it's obviously just your personal preference, but you can see there that I've added a slight drop shadow, and obviously an image wouldn't be on a building, obviously an image wouldn't be presented like that, but this was just to show you how to uh, how to position it onto an obvious uh, surface. So that is it. That's how you do it, and you can do that with anything. And that is van that's vanishing point. That is the basics of vanishing point, and that's what the majority of people will want to know when they uh, intend on positioning something on a plane. That's the best of vanishing point. So I hope you've learned something today. Um, I find this really useful, and I really think that um, it should be used a lot more because it's it simplifies pos uh, positioning imag imagery on planes or on any flat surface, like tenfold so yeah so i hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial um if you have enjoyed it please leave a like and a comment it really does help and also it will show me that you want to see more of these um because i see a lot of tutorials going uh, going around that are kind of the same kind of thing and i wanted to um keep stuff different so i'm not sure whether you've ever seen a vanishing point tutorial but now you have so that's great so yeah um thank you very much for watching um we've got um more activity coming on the way as well i've just got to fix a few uni things and then i'll be back to uploading very re very regularly so uh, thanks for following me and um yeah have a great day i'll speak to you later